Welcome to the day in history for May 28th. Today is the Spanish Armada. And I'm really excited because this is a really interesting day in history. Now, the big idea for today is that historical events often have two sides that are seen very differently based on which side you're on. If you are Spanish, you're going to see today's day in history much different than if you are English. So, uh, today, the Spanish Armada left Portugal, or Lisbon, Portugal, heading for the English Channel with over 130 ships. Um, and there's a, yeah, I, t between 20 and 40,000 people were on them, and they were planning to invade England. Ooh, okay, I'll let you write this down. Okay, here we go. We are in Lisbon, Portugal, and the ships are just leaving. Now... As you can see, we've talked about this area a lot. And so getting ships from Spain up to England, well, they've been doing that for a long time. So it didn't take them too long to get there. And actually tomorrow is the day that the English first see the ships start to head up towards uh, the English coast. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, we have to talk about Queen Elizabeth because there's a lot of reasons why the Spanish Armada decided to come and invade England. And one of them, well, has to do with the queen herself. She had actually rejected King Philip II as her husband um, a few years before. And so that kind of made Spain mad. Now let's take a look at this guy. This is King Philip II. He is the leader of the most powerful empire of the time. And if you're the most powerful king and you ask a queen to marry you and she says no, well, it might make you a little upset, right? Now, the Spanish had a huge empire at this time. And we've talked about the Spanish. We've talked about them landing in South America. We've talked about the silver mines. We've talked about the gold. We've talked about the money. The Spanish were making a ton of money, and that is often what historians believe helped pay for all of these ships and this invasion. Now, there's another reason, and it has to do with this. Now, there has always been arguments, fights, wars, disagreements over religion for, well, forever. And the one in England uh, and Spain had to do with Protestants versus Catholics. Now, they have very different, well, I don't want to get into the main differences, but let's just say that the Spanish wanted Catholic, uh, Catholic Church back in England, and England wanted Protestants. So, it caused an argument. Now, these guys, we have Francis Drake, Frobisher, Grisham, Cavendish, and Hawkins. These were all uh, English captains of ships that were given um, permission by the Queen to uh, pretty much be pirates against the Spanish. Now, in England, these guys were heroes. They would go and capture Spanish ships coming back filled with silver and goods. Um, and they were, they were heroes. Now, if we look at this picture, on one side we have Francis Drake, who is an English hero, and on the other side we have a pirate. Now, if you were Spanish, if you were from Spain, you would see Francis Drake as a pirate. If you were from England, you would see him as a hero. And so this is one of those two sides, because the English thought that they were pretty awesome. Spanish, not so much. And so this made King Philip mad. Now, not only did King Philip get rejected by the queen, not only did King Philip think that England had the wrong religion, not only were English pirates stealing from the Spanish, the Spanish also were pretty upset that the English supported the Netherlands' independence. Now, at the time, the Spanish were in the Dutch Netherlands, and they decided to revolt and not be under Spanish rule anymore. And you know what the English did? The English helped out. So Spain declared war, and all of a sudden, boom, we got problems. Well, we got a lot of problems, right? Now, hence the Spanish Armada. So King Philip says, you know what? We're done. We're going to invade England. We're going to put um, the Queen of the Scots back on the throne. We're going to make England Catholic again. And so they launched a giant armada. Now, the Spanish Armada had 
22 of these giant galleons, which are these huge ships. They had over a, a hundred um, merchant ships, so like regular trading ships that were armed with some cannons and stuff. But they also had tens of thousands of soldiers and supplies. And these ships were actually going to go pick up troops from the Netherlands to move into England. Now, the Spanish Armada sails, and the English are like, okay, well, we better do something about this. Now, the English had been making other ships that were much smaller and faster, and they also had a ton of merchant ships, like 163. So even though the Spanish had 130, and the English had uh, almost 200, um, the, the Spanish ships were much larger and had a lot more people on them. Now, this is a very talked about and celebrated event in English history. Not so much in Spanish history, but it's something that's talked about a lot and it has become a, uh, a point of pride. Um, there's some movies about it. There's lots of stuff about it. So I'd recommend doing some follow-up on this day in history. Now, the, um, the Spanish fleet was captained by the Duke of Medina Sidonia. Now, he was a respected military leader, but he had very little um, sailing experience. He didn't have a lot of experience leading ships, yet he's given command of the largest fleet to ever attack England. Might be part of the problem. Now, the English, however, had Charles Howard uh, at, in command and Francis, Francis Drake in second command, and these guys had a lot of experience. So we have a lot of experience, not very much experience, See a problem starting to happen here? Now, here's what happened. So, Spanish Armada comes up, and the Spanish Armada uh, ends up, and we're going to talk about each of these here, but I want you to see the routes. Now, they go up, there's a few battles, then the wind, the weather turns horrible, and it blows the Spanish ships up over the top of Scotland, and then they come back. So, let's talk about some of the battles now. Well, actually, first we got to talk about the ships. I'm sorry, I got my slides mixed up. But here we go. Now, the Spanish had these large galleons that were designed to um, mostly shoot cannon once or twice, but then um, board other ships. Now, at the time, when we think of sea battles like this, we think of two ships here and here, right? That's not what the Spanish were used to. The Spanish were used to going, and then driving up to the ship and all the people would jump on and they would have like a battle on the ships and then they would take the ship. Now the English realized that that didn't work well for them. And so there, the English had these smaller, faster ships that were designed to shoot a lot of cannons and then stay away from the big galleons. It's kind of like a, a really slow big person who's like trying to catch somebody that's super fast and the big person can't catch them because they're not fast enough. That's what happened with the English ships. Now, the Spanish, though, had so many, and they had this crescent formation, like a crescent moon, that made it very difficult for the English to cause any real damage. However, what happened was the Spanish went to go pick up the troops from the Netherlands, and they had to stop and put their anchors down. And when they stopped and put their anchors down, they weren't in the Crescent protection anymore, and the English took these fire ships. They pretty much took like sap and tar and wood, and they set these ships on fire, and they launched these ships into the Spanish Armada, and the Spanish Armada freaked out because you don't want these ships to catch on fire because then you're done. And so many of the Spanish ships had to actually cut off their anchors and run. And when they did that, they got scattered. And then a little bit later, the, uh, the English had another battle and they sunk a bunch of their ships because they were running around and shooting them and it was a bad deal. Now, what finally just sealed the Spanish Armada's fate was some bad weather that pushed them into the Northern Sea and the Spanish just, they knew that they were defeated. They couldn't get the troops from the Netherlands. They couldn't land in England. And so they just wanted to get home. But they had to sail all the way up around England and then come back. And at this time, they didn't have charts and maps like we do today. And so they actually got too close to the shore in Scotland and the weather pushed them onto the rocks. And tons of these Spanish ships just got crushed 
sailors died all over the place, all tons of ships got sunk. It was a bad deal. By the time they got back to Spain, the, uh, the Spanish Armada had lost 67 of their 130 ships and over 20,000 sailors and troops had died and they did not even land at England. So the Spanish Armada, for England, a huge victory, for Spain, a humiliating defeat. I would highly suggest that you guys read more about this, watch some videos. This is a really interesting event and it's interesting to think about it from both sides. So that is today's day in history. Thank you.